to just down to the uh, rose bond. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for bearing with me. We were through these technical issues. I would like to call the March 8th meeting of the Capital Projects Advisory Board to order. And I guess the first is uh, roll call, Daniel. All right, uh, Bill Bostic here. William Messner. Present. Okay. Uh, ben Kaiser. He was not going to be. Chris Rutherford. Here. Okay. Robert Chandler. I'm here. Chris Johnson. Here. Seth Wagner. Here. All right. Okay. okay. So I guess it's. Your show at this point. I guess I'm the MC here. Um, sharing setup here. Pretty see my screen. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to put some slides together, Chris. Um, I realize you know, there's more people on this meeting than as you expect. We're getting closer, and I feel like some people may have kind of Swiss cheese about the events and, and where we've the progress we've made. And, and so I just want to get a little bit of a, a recap and then kind of explain where we're at today and what we need to do today to get to the next steps in the process. So um, just for everybody's um, edification and, and background, um, just to give you this idea that we haven't uh, convened uh, as broadly for a while. Um, it's not in the budget season, but um, and so in July, uh, facility planning was actually transferred over to uh, DAS Enterprise Asset Management from the CFO's office, and we're still in a kind of a process of detangling and, and defining roles and responsibilities, but by and large, that's a a benefit where we're having uh, some, you know, the technical aspects of things sort of consolidated at EAM. So if you're seeing something that says, "Wait, well, I thought Daniel's the CFO." No, we 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 moved over in July. Um, in October, DAS adopted revised administrative rules for both uh, pertaining to well, it really covers the whole statewide facility planning process, which is. Uh, described in OAR 125-125, and there is a significant uh, revision to the language, procedures, um, definitions of the rule um, that agencies need to uh, be familiar with because uh, it, it affects the process and sort of the cadence of when you submit materials for the process. So, um, you know, the the implication of that is, is the those procedural changes required us to we drafted a new CPAP charter so that the CPAP has a consistent sort of decision and, and actions um, relative to the rule. And also we need to have an updated planning manual, which agencies use to apply the statewide facility planning process. And it said, so traditionally we kind of begin processing and thinking about this in sort of February uh, with the even numbered year. Uh, but in this February, if you remember, if you were happened to be at our last meeting, uh, the, we learned that the governor's office had asked to meet with agencies to review projects prior to them going to uh, present a CPAP. And um, so what that uh, I believe the result of that is that we're, uh, we're going to have a timeline change that will require us to have a 
compressed CPAB review schedule. But the benefit is that you're having uh, more of a streamlined um, review process because we're not being asked for new projects that don't have or not as supportable as other projects. So um, that's we kind of felt that was a, a win win. So we're just trying to accommodate that shift in the schedule into how we've traditionally done business. Um, and on that note, you know, March today, uh, this is usually a meeting that is reserved as an agency kickoff where we have agency people uh, come and, and uh, ask the board questions and kind of get a feeling for what is the expectations are. I think we're going to push that kickoff now to April 12th. So our goal today is to, um, in lieu of what happened in the last thing, is to finalize all of our materials that would then go to the agencies to serve as the instructions and the expectations that they will use to um, complete their agency facility plans. So just to touch on the manual, so there is a manual now. This is it. It's all in draft form. I set this to the board. So I don't know if anybody had a real chance to dig into it, but it, it essentially what it does, um, I'll just sort of give a visual here. I could go back to my. So that's that's it. You'll, you, agencies will get this. Um, so what's new in the planning? Manual? Well, it incorporates the new administrative rule languages and references, and they're all hyperlink, so it makes it easy to access uh, specific instructions or, or requirements. Provides an updated uh, definitions and terminology. There were things in the previous rule that were uh, very outdated or not uh, current, and so we want to make everything consistent. Um, and it distinguishes the roles and responsibilities between DAS, CPAB, CPC and agencies. So who's who does what during the process and what is expected? Um, it outlines key process steps and submission dates. So there's a schedule in there, and that's the thing that had to get tweaked the most. Um, given the, the sort of change in the compression of the schedule. Um, it provides submission guidelines, and content requirements, so it still has the. Uh, you know, what do we put in our presentations? What are the the output metrics that we like to see or what are the, the content elements that we like to have addressed. Uh, that's all in there. Uh, and then there's the criteria for how the board uh, will uh, review uh, projects and plans uh, that come during the presentations and it also, uh, more importantly, clearly identifies the capital area project review as a function of the capital planning commission, which um, was sort of not clear in our previous rules, uh, but there's also a, a, a lot of procedural requirements that are not detailed in there that agencies will want to take heed of. Um, a, because there really wasn't that guidance uh, well documented before, and there was always a question from agencies about, do I need to do this? How do I do this? I try to make that super straightforward. In fact, uh, one addition, there's a link in the in the manual, but we'll also put this on our web page. But so if you have a project, there's this new created an app that allows you to it sort of replaces the static intake form. And so this is a self-guided application where you you, know, you put in your information you can geolocate it and hey, it's capital construction is it over a million dollars is it in the capital area so it all it's kind of like TurboTax so <laughs> my my aspiration I think with the manual and the process and everything is is to give a roadmap uh, to agencies so it's kind of straightforward uh, decision making path um, and I thought this was the most best way to kind of consolidate all that into one activity. Um, so you have everything here and what this does is in the back end of it on the server side, it just generates a bunch of data tables. And there's analytics. So when these projects come in, we can collect them and then I can share this 
uh, to whomever, whenever we have uh, things digitally acquired uh, as a you know, Excel thing. So that's very helpful for just tracking. Uh, There's a note. I don't see any intent. Of course, we are. Yeah. I, I don't think he's. That your link didn't come through. Yeah. Oh, it's because it's on a different share. All right. Hold on. Thank you. Cal was waiting for it to pop up again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here you go. Ready to see that? Yeah. So, so here's this app. You, know, you just pick your agency, it's all drop down. Fill this in. This writes to the data table. Uh, you, you have an address and it's a the existing the end of the address. If not, uh, you can skip that, but you know you can locate this uh, at least a site, and you know, we can do the rest of the geo stuff. But, but that creates it as a uh, geolocated right. asset that goes relative to the project and the data table. You can choose between you know the level of by the type of review. So you have capital construction. Just reset this. If you have capital, uh, you know you have this million dollar threshold. Yeah, uh, is it in the capital area? No. Okay. Let's see, and you don't have to. It's not the capital area. It's not a million dollars. You don't have to. Is it over a million? And it's in, sorry, I'm mumbling to myself. Uh, so I've gone through this, all these uh, possible scenarios that, that creates a skip logic. Um, if you're in the capital area, yes. Well, then what's your area plan? Then there's all these area plan compliance requirements. This is for CPC. It's a major improvement, which is category of uh, level of review. You can enter the cost, and so it just keeps on going down. But if there's there a, a, a condition or a criteria that makes it so where a project is doesn't have to be reviewed, it kicks you out. It says no review. So that I think you know, there's no ambiguity for agencies when they're yeah. So at, at some level, they can say like, do I really need to have this go through CPC or CPAP? This will tell you, and it's self guided without just calling me up. So. Yeah, so there's that. That's part of the manual now. Uh, this might not be the final form because there's ways that we can save about five questions if I create some layer assets for the map um, that automatically know that it's a Salem project or it's a capital project. Um, but I haven't got around to that yet. But for this introduction, there you go. Um, so, Pretty impressive work, Daniel. Oh, you like that? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you, Daniel. Let's go back to my Adobe thing here. Okay. So yeah, so there's that. So the schedule, if you look in this, um, sorry, I'm just like, I hate being one screen just like flipping around a bunch of paper, but um, I had to reallocate agencies into in groups so basically we lost a group we lost group four so everything got shifted so we have this issue we have to sort of agree to resolve a uh, time related issue um, and my approach was okay there's going to be some small agencies as we, we typically face early in the process because they're they're not very complex. They have small asks, or in some cases, no asks at all. Let's group all those agencies together in group one and have kind of a, you know, the speed round uh, at one meeting. And then as we get into the, the more complex capital related uh, agencies, we'll put those in group two. Group two still going to be a bigger meeting. Then we will do the group three, which would be the large agencies. And how I shifted the schedule um, is we had to, based on the guidance I got at the last CPAP meeting, is that 
uh, August would be fair game for to use for additional reviews. So we're using that. And so we're just running things a little bit later than we usually do. But um, so group one will effectively meet in June, group two, July, group three, August. So we've shifted. Um, but this table right here, you can see that shows key dates uh, for each group to submit materials because there's a there's a cadence that needs to happen here, and the cadence now is that you know you need to have a project. If it's a capital project, it has to be reviewed by the CPC, uh, and the board has stated that they would like to know that that project is compliant uh, with area plans on the CPC prior to coming to the board. Um, so logistically, that that uh, we're figuring out how well that can work uh, in this compressed timeline. If not. You know, it, figure out how to do it, but um, there are, if you were had a capital project, you wanted to have it reviewed and it was, you would have, here's the, the key dates that you would have to do that in order to have it reviewed prior to when you would present to CPAP. So um, I've just done the math for you or the, the, the scheduling. Uh, it's it's totally dependent on your circumstances, but I just want to make it for folks to be able to look at something and say, you know, in week 24 and June 14th, I got to submit. There's a meeting, so I need to back up from there. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, I don't know, but it, 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 I think it makes it a little bit more user friendly than having to email me. Uh, so, um, so group one, um, this is my proposal. So just the whatever you think, but. Uh, it will be June 14th, and we've been extended from nine to one from our typical 10 to noon. We have included plenty of bathroom breaks. There could be some snacks involved. Uh, but I'm proposing eight presentations, 10 to 15 minutes each. It's mathematically feasible. Uh, you could easily, I think, drift off at about presentation five, but if we have enough caffeine, <laughs> I don't know. You tell me, does that, this was the concession that we were trying to, or propose making. So is that something we, we could do a, a speed dating round, I guess? I don't know how to describe it. And, and you're saying, Daniel, you said June 14th? June 14th would be group one presentation. Yeah, okay. So just, right now the calendar is is our normal calendar time. So you haven't extended it yet. Is my question. Wait, I haven't. I haven't what? It still is at noon. It's still into noon. Yeah. Calendar is yep. ten to noon, noon right now. It's ten to noon right now, but I haven't. Yeah, this is all. We're still in proposal talk right now. Right. Yeah. So okay. That's that was that was. We my agree question. to this today, then then I'll start sending out a bunch of stuff. But this is um, getting your uh, thoughts on whether or not this is. Because this is your part of it. This is your uh, contribution. It's uh, I'm listening to eight presentations uh, in a row. And and I think just from my perspective, if we could, you know, have a bathroom break, just stand up, whatever, each hour. That um, maybe like every two these, few presentations, we can do a ten minute break or five minute break, yeah, and then a lunch. Just yeah. If, a group this social is socially incapable of break less than 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> but, but again, group one is the low stress, right. low maintenance. Let's get through yeah. and get familiar, be done with it. So yeah. Yeah. this is a fairly low risk meeting. Um, I, I think it works fine. Okay. I mean, I do. Better be coming back twice. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's strange. Yeah, that yes. proposal one, yeah. proposal two would be a little. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what. Yeah. Uh, Christian, Bruce, Bill, or others online uh, have a thought. Well, let's. I, I tell you what. Let me just go through the rest okay. of the two, and then we'll we'll sort of discuss because I left some some room for noodling on this. So, group two. Uh, this means July twelfth, nine to noon, same time, same format, uh, but seven presentations. 
will manage this one. Um, facilitated. Uh, so you're not seeing that as the extended? Nine to one. Oh, you're saying nine to one. Yeah. I thought you said nine to two. Oh, sorry, nine, nine to one. one. Uh, with Greg, it's been seven presentations. Yeah. Give him an extra five to ten minutes. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, I feel like these are agencies that um, usually have a story to tell. So uh, this is going to be requires us to uh, manage uh, kind of the the time. Yes. So, but I still think that's feasible. Group three should be August 9th. Again, nine to one. Um, five presentations and any kind of select project reviews that need to happen. We'll give them about 30 minutes each. And that's a typical meeting. It's just longer because we're consolidating uh, the plan reviews and these the related project reviews into one meeting. So we lost our, our August buffer, but there's only five presentations. So that's my proposal. Uh, um, you know, the next steps for that, if you agree, it would be I would just distribute this, the manual and the schedules to the agencies and just you know, ring their bell to let them know what uh, situation is, which I have resisted to formally do broadly simply because we've had so many kind of curveballs here recently, but um, I would inform everyone just prepare and the plan is at this point um, for all people here is, is to use our existing workbooks and just update them. We're still in this period where uh, we're uh, deploying our a new system that we would use for data collection and management and um, so we're kind of stuck in this uh, make do kind of situation again and I think uh, the easiest thing would just be to update the workbooks and that seems to be satisfactory for folks uh, that and also I think it'd be a lot easier than trying to deal with uh, data that I think is uh, and it's a bit dated, I guess. Um, so there's an approach to that that I would I will add to the manual, which will be just sort of some basic instructions about the how to fill out, update the workbook, and I'll I'll but I can I can do it as a batch escalation of the values to some sort of level. Um, prior to sending it to the agency. So it's not somebody manually sort of changing. I can just do it as a as a whole uh, as a whole workbook. So I prefer to do it that way, but um, it's kind of up to the agency. And I'll I think oh prepare and distribute a standard PowerPoint template because I know people really like that. Um, but agencies are free to as long as they meet the content requirements of the presentation guidelines just so you're you're at least answering the questions uh, you can do your own thing but especially for those group one agencies it was kind of like it's a the powerpoint template because it provides very clear direction and then um you know just connect with the agencies for questions and uh, that, that's my process after uh, today so Bruce, you have a question yeah, just a, a simple question. I wanted to give you a, a shout out for the um, all the DAS forms putting a narrative because sometimes the numbering uh, it sounds like a military number, like a one hundred seven B and so forth. So it's nice to have a little narrative that says, "Oh, this is the planning narrative. This is the summary." My question is, where where are these? And are they posted somewhere on the DAS site so the agencies can go in there and say, oh yeah, I just need to fill out my 10 year plan and here's the current version of it. Yeah, so uh, 
all of the uh, budget forms are integrated with uh, what are essentially this inventory uh, of buildings and their conditions in as tabs in a, the workbooks that agencies fill out. So right. we made it where the budget forms uh, are one and the same, uh, and they they cross calculate. Uh, so you're effectively as you're developing your facility plan, you're also filling out these budget forms. Um, yeah. Whether or not those numbers are what actually gets into the agency request budget is a different thing, but uh, that was the, the purpose behind it. We're just going to go with that for this session simply because the next time we'll probably have a whole different approach and different product for agencies to interact with and update. So let's not let's not reinvent something for a short time when people are kind of familiar with the workbooks as it is. So um, that's the, the approach we're going with. So everything that you're saying is uh, located in the workbooks. They're part of the workbooks, but they, yeah, they have these funky little uh, numerical things. It's because they, they ultimately go into the, the budget request. So uh, thank you, Daniel. I, yeah, I just try to give them names so they're not so arcane. Um, so that's what I have as my proposal. Uh, it's now your opportunity to tell me that that's great or terrible. Well, I like the idea of fewer meetings, longer meetings. Great. 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 Yeah, I've already spoken. I think it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Grouping's good. Yeah, as I said previously, it's fine with me. So about the others. Bill, you have a thought? No, I'm good. Do you have any more, Bruce? I think it looks really good and it's really simple. And I like the definitions. I, I like the ease of use. I like the clear plan with the, some dates already. Uh, we're all busy during the summer, so it's helpful to be able to put those dates out early. And then we can uh, hopefully clear the calendars and make all, all of those to have a quorum. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, small detail. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, any thought? I also like the um, the idea of the fewer but longer meetings. Um, you know, I think the the planning out in the future is all a perspective. Like my calendar starts filling up. Like my calendar, my summer's already booked out. Um, so I can we'll be able to move some things around. I think to accommodate this. Um. And I do appreciate that it's going to be consolidated to fewer meetings. Daniel, I would suggest that uh, you query the board members to see whether a conflicts with primarily vacation schedules that can't be moved so that uh, the issue of quorum can be addressed earlier rather than later. Yeah. Schedules. That's a good idea. I think we'll, we'll do that. Uh, you know, now we've got the dates. So yeah. We can look at it and see what works with us. Ask one on. on Next week, we'll get everything sent to everybody. Any other thoughts? Any thoughts on the manual? Any thoughts on the uh, content being missing? No, I mean, Daniel, I, honestly, I just think uh, this is a really good work product. And I'm sure there's going to be things we're going to see that could be better and that will, as we go through it. But it, it just, this is, a, in my opinion, a step, a step function change. So I just really appreciate the efforts. Thank you. And if you want to keep this as a draft through this year and then get the feedback of the agencies as they test drive it and then maybe five, is that an option? Well, I think we'll, we'll keep the document as, because it, it's sort of an, an, a biennial uh, living document. So yeah. the same thing with like the budget instructions, we just kind of update them right. as the issues change or the requirements change. So. I mean, it's locked in for what the process is today, okay. um, but you know we are anticipating some changes as 
try reading implementation gets underway and figure out uh, next steps in uh, collecting more data. So um, my thought is just like, let's just agree to this. I mean, there's always going to be something where that totally uh, did not make sense and it was actually a burden to agencies. Uh, I'm happy to, you know. Yeah, I, I guess, yeah. yeah. My opinion on this is that it's, and, and Daniel and Bill, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it just, it's a living document, it is, it is meant to be giving good guidance to the extent that it's final, then I, I think we can keep it that way. And we'll, I, I think there's no there's no rule that says we can't update it as we go along, right? Of a continuous well, improvement. Well, I mean, on the other hand, we try to fix it for the whole submittal and not change it during that process. Yeah, so, that, to, yeah. so, so to be clear, when we say uh, we're approving this as final for this session is like, these are the instructions I'll use for this submittal. Yeah. Right. But in 20, for the 25, 20, no, 729 yeah. session, it could be a lot different. Right. So, uh, yeah. so there's something in, in permanence there, but we want to give the, the process uh, consistency for that, at least that period, that the year that it's due. Okay, we good? <laughs> I don't know whether it makes sense to take everybody's time, but I had, I went through it and I have a few little thoughts, comments, questions, and I can do those offline too. Although one, one that I'll just throw out is the use of capital with an O and capital with an A. And, and it, it um, you know, we have a um, legacy with the Capital Planning Commission that goes back to when a new capital was built, being proposed. So in fact, that's the wrong spelling for what the commission's role is, but you know, oh, it's a legacy. Yeah. On, on the other hand, when we start talking about the area outside of the Capitol Mall, which is legitimate to use the old, um, it should be a. To say Capital Planning Commission. No, no. When it when we talk about capital, capital area plans that aren't the Capital yeah. Mall area plan. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. I think that that's an easy change. There's yeah. Actually, the comparison to the, a lot of the stuff, there's like capitalization errors, yeah. Yeah. all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I will take any kind of. Uh, usage for make grammatical changes, just send them to me. Yeah, and that was see. what I was thinking might be. Shit, and then yeah. we'll just say this this incorporates all the changes. It's final, and I'm going to send it to the agency. Yeah, but I don't think that's for sorry for a call out because yeah, people will interchange that word, right? Yeah, don't yeah. think about it. Yeah, yeah. well, it, it makes it a little clearer what we're talking about. Yeah, I think my my thing is there. I meant to relate to what's in statute. Mm -hmm. And I, if I did that an error, I don't know, but I think that, you know, it was just how it's written in. So capital area planning, it maybe, I don't, I think I may have. So we'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that the other area plans necessarily have the capital with an O. Okay. Two. I mean, my, my, my intent here is just to make sure people understand yeah. you know, what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. So this is, that's fair. I think it's, it's good to clean that up. So I'll take those and I can turn those edits over pretty quick. So yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just, uh, other than raising that one, I'll just yeah, spin you through can, the... Yeah, feel free to mark it up as much as possible. Yeah. And, uh, and I do like strengthening the letter, the cover letter. Okay. I, you know, that helps summarize the whole thing. And I think that's uh, helpful for our review. Well, I think the uh, start of the method there, uh, even though it's it's a, it's something on the agencies to produce, um, 
sometimes just having a paper trail of things yeah. uh, and mechanisms that create record yeah. uh, helps when there's sort of changes and things. Yeah. And so those memos, you know, it's something that goes in their record. Hey, your plan was accepted. I have proof. Or here's what we said. I think that helps, even though there's a it's a task that needs to be completed. So. So with this discussion, do we. Do we have to wait to see those changes, Bill, or. And then maybe do an offline vote on the email or. Are there things that were, are are they just like grammatical changes? It, 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 it varies a little and some of them are questions, so um, I don't. I don't know that anything of them are that substantive. Um, so it would seem as if we're probably generically subject to a few tweaks. We're approving this because I think the sense that I have. I'd be ready to approve it subject to not substantial changes being done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what's what's the definition of substantial? So. <laughs> um. At least from my perspective, something that would change, you know, the submittal process or some of those kinds of things. The, the form, the form, uh, changing the form that the yeah, other that Daniel um, showed us. So the others are little things about, well, like the example I gave of the A versus O, and um, and whether we want to more closely all the way along a line, the timing with the budget documents, because, you know, we've had in here a 10 year plan, but what's in the budgeting is six. And that's kind of a question. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not, but we, we extended it to 10 years because we were using a, a planning, a 10 year planning horizon based on the data that we had. Yeah. So it was, Extend for that purpose. Um, but in statute, it says it's a sort of a minimum thing. So uh, yeah. that's how you're, you're sort of wiggling around that. Is, uh, yeah. So I think the issues related to procedural uh, things that need to happen for submitting, uh, I'm reticent to, to change those because they reflect specifically yeah. what's in yeah. the rule. Well, uh, again, there are some of these things that I think we've already agreed we would not address now, okay, but would maybe revisit in the future. And, you know, one that I had brought up previously was the uh, scaling of the facility condition index. Yes. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're going to keep that the same this yeah. time because everything yeah, is sort of packaged up, but that could be completely blown up next time. Yeah. Yeah, so I think my preference would be let's look at the usage and uh, the the tweaks uh, yeah. as far as meaning and, and language, uh, not get into the substantive stuff yeah. where it's procedurally, and then, then, then it's just a matter of if everybody sort of uh, agree that making some reasonable uh, corrections to the, the text that we're still agreeing in principle that this is final. Yeah, we can just go from there. Yeah, is that uh, something we can agree to? Everybody in concurrence with that. Bill, do you, do you mind summarizing it, Bill, so we all have a firm understanding of what we just agreed just to? Just that. Um, well, basically, what it boils down to is that we're agreeing with this as the what will be used for this cycle subject to a few minor tweaks of words or language for clarification. I'm on that. Do we need to make that a formal vote, Bill, so you have that for the records? Okay. In the chat, Bruce says, do you want a motion to approve the statewide facility planning process manual for 2527? Okay. Well, probably want... wouldn't hurt. Okay. Probably wouldn't hurt. So do you, I would entertain a motion. I make a motion to uh, 
approved the statewide facility planning process manual for 2527 as presently constituted. I'll second. With with minor uh, usage and grammatical corrections and perhaps word choice corrections. Nothing that affects the actual process uh, itself. Yeah. So we amended uh, subject uh, with the acceptance of minor changes of grammar, clarification of words that do not change the substance of the document. Okay, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So we have approved it. Great. And I guess just one thing is, is I did, we still have these things, and it's turned out they still work for folks um, just as guided posts during the meetings, or is it too kind or something? I don't know whether that really corresponds with what we've got now or not. The these things are things that we sort of ask or give guidance to on um, the manual. These are a tool for the board members to follow along to ensure that they're yeah. or at least give reference for things that um, we want them to kind of address. I don't know what I mean, we've been playing around with this for a couple of by but I, I when you set up a criteria and you want to have kind of a formal way of, of evaluating something consistently, it kind of gets helpful to have a tool that you're using as kind of a I don't want to say it's a rubric, but it's like at least a a, what? a list of things that you know we, we want to see examined. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I was just going to say, Daniel. In the past, I think it helped us have more intelligent questions when we were, you know, listening for the presentation because it gave us things to kind of listen for. Um, it is a nice tool, but for the, for the board I members. don't know that this wants to be something that's part of the record. It's more a tool for the board members. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. We never turned it in or anything. It was just, it was kind of yeah. just our notes, and it kind of just helped us as we went around, uh, went to the conversations. I don't think, Bill, to your point, it was never turned in to be part of the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, yeah, yeah. These are sort of proposed as like scratch yeah. things for notes. Yeah. So um, we can continue to sure. Use those. Well, if just if everybody thinks it's helpful, sure. Okay. So other than that, yeah. Oh, go ahead. And I'm sorry, um, Daniel. Is that is that included in the manual already, or is this is it separate? The, the content of here is alluded to in the manual, but those are just what the agency needs to relate to. But these documents are not because they're yeah. oriented towards the board members. So okay, yeah. But, my my only thing was is that, that the the presenter knows kind of what we're looking for, and that's the whole purpose of the manual. So that's yeah. as long as so those concepts a, that are on that cheat sheet are in that manual. Yeah, I'm, I'm there's fine. a direct cross relationship to yeah. the manual. Uh, that they're both there uh, in the same uh, in the same. should be kind of it, it, Yeah. You're just getting like this condensed little table yeah. where it's just like, yeah, they touched on that. Or they didn't really. Da Daniel? Yeah. Uh, I, I like having these uh, grading aids uh, just because it, then it, it helps us jot down the notes as we as a, a CPAB do our work. So I, I think for internal use, it'll be beneficial. Okay, that that's kind of what I was hoping. So yeah, sounds like we've got a consensus. All right, and I can have them available. Mm -hmm. today, yeah. Right. Okay. yeah, sure. You don't have to worry about making copies. I'll make sure they're here. Okay, great. So uh, that's actually all I have. Mm -hmm. That's all I was uh, sort of planning for us to accomplish today was just get the finalization and plan that we would have an agency kickoff in April, and then they'd have May uh, be kind of off, I guess, yeah. and then we start up again in July. Yeah. Well, if we've conducted what is needed, I'm not 
particularly interested in prolonging this. So unless anybody has a last word, I would call us adjourned. Do we have any comments from the Oh, if you want to entertain from others that uh, non board members. Yeah, just uh, any so comments? comments. There. Seeing none. <laughs> yeah. We're safe to adjourn. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend. Well, are you having any ramifications for the park? So you can be uh, no, 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 that's an enemy. I'm sure our crews are clear. Yeah. Close the park. I'll see you on the meeting that